youtube.com slash mayhew mayhem that's youtube.com slash m-a-y-h-e-w m-a-y-h-e-m Hello and welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes Mayhem. I am your host, my name is Michael Mayhew, and I am here with my co-hosts. What's up everybody, it's me, Greg. We are joined once again by... Hi everyone, I'm Dale. 30 Minutes of Mayhem is available on YouTube, iTunes, Android, Stitcher, and Spreaker. All you have to do is search Mayhew Mayhem, that's M-A-Y-H-E-W-M-A-Y-H-E-M, and make sure to rate us five stars. Also, you can help us afford to continue doing the show by donating to 30 Minutes of Mayhem via PayPal. Just use the email address in the description, 30 Minutes of Mayhem at Gmail. Pretty please. With cherry on top. And I will suck your dick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't even need to He's donate. <laughs> you don't even need to donate for him to do that, but please donate. He will. He, we'll, we'll get him to do it. And if you want, and if you want uh, to fuck up your children's lives... We could talk to Nick. We could probably work something out. But the segments in tonight's episode are picked out by the one and only Greg. His favorite segments from episodes 1 to 36. First one we have is uh, from episode 11. It was um, favorite childhood cartoon. I picked this segment because I am a huge animation buff. I don't care what country it's from. I've always enjoyed animation ever since I was little. I've always respected it as an art form and a story and a way of telling stories. And I love talking about old cartoons and just hearing about how every people, how they grew up on the same things I did. And I just really enjoy like talking about like just things we enjoyed about cartoons and stuff like that. It, it was great because it had that nice nostalgia factor. You got to geek out a little. I did like it because it brought back so many memories and whatnot. So check out episode 11, favorite childhood cartoon, and listen to Nick talk about Yowie. Okay, everyone, here's eh, something that I would like to uh, present. What were some or just one of your favorite cartoons that you watched growing up? Dale. Yeah, Courage the, the Dale. Cowardly Dog. Oh, oh yeah. That show, was, you. that show was so great. I've that show was awesome. I know. Honestly, I know that's... honestly, I hated that show. Stupid dog. <clears throat> well, now I hate you. That's okay. Anyways, I mean, th- I, didn't, I just, I love that show growing up. It was so, it was so funny. I just like how <laughs> he just randomly gets scared out of nowhere. And then he's, like, not talking at all, and the next thing you know, whatever he says is, like, straight into the point, and then he's, like, done talking. Mike, what about you? One of my favorite shows growing up was The Rugrats. Oh, he beat me to it. I really liked The Rugrats. It was probably my favorite show. I really liked Doug also, but I'm going to... Disney I'm def- or Nickelodeon? Uh, the original. Yeah, the Nickelodeon. original Doug. Not the, not the one that Disney did. The original Nickelodeon Doug was great. When Disney bought it over, it turned to shit. It did go to shit. Yeah, Seems like a lot of Disney <laughs> shit that they've been taking over goes to shit. I'm like, I don't know if I really want to see how these new Star Wars are going to work out. No. But anyway, uh, the Rugrats was pretty awesome. And then by, by the time um, All Grown Up came out, I was already like... Fuck, I was probably in almost scaring my graduate high school, I think, when it came out. And uh, I watched it a couple times. I was like, actually, honestly, this is actually really good. You know, it had the... It, was, it, had it the wasn't feel. that bad. Yeah, it had kind of had the feel of the old shit, like, when I was growing up and being such the huge age difference. And then, you know, like, it kind of it kind of felt like the same show, more or less, you know. Honestly, scenarios. I... Honestly, I could not, like, when I was younger, I loved everything Rugrats, but, like, when I rewatch a lot of, you know, a lot of the uh, Rugrats and that, I can only watch this stuff up to the movie. Like, after the movie came out, I, like, everything after that, I literally cannot watch anymore because I just don't find it that funny. Like, the older episodes, 
like before they began introducing and before they introduced Dill and everything, like yeah. those episodes, like I, I love those episodes. Those were like, those are great. But I mean, I just, I honestly can't stand anything they did after the first movie. Brian. I'm going to go old school on your asses. I'm going, um, I'm going to Inspector Gadget. Oh, oh no. I'm nice going Hanna Barbera. And I'm going, um, I'm also going uh, Pink Panther. Ninja Turtle. Well, well then in, in, in Ninja Turtle is probably my first one, and then Inspector Gadget. I like those cartoons. Yeah, I, I actually remember watching uh, some of this shit when I was younger, Pink especially Panther Inspector awesome. Gadget. Oh, yeah, Inspector Gadget was the shit, man. Yep. That show was amazing. Speaking of, like, Nick shows, real quick before before we pass this on, there used to be this show on Nickelodeon. It wasn't animated, though. It was, like, uh, it had puppets, and it had, like, a dude, and I cannot remember what it was called. I used to watch it all the fucking time. Oh, 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 was the dude, re- and, like, an actual guy, and the rest of them were all puppets? Yes. And, like, they yes. had, like, and they had skits and, like, cartoons and that. Yeah. Wienerville. That was Wienerville. the name of the show. Yes. Wienerville. Wienerville. Yeah. I watched that show growing up too, man. I I know about this stuff. I even taped the, I even taped the Wienerville Hanukkah special when I was growing. <laughs> uh, not my, gonna lie, I loved that. My grandma and I used to watch that show. She she actually that was one of the ones she liked that and like uh where in the world is Carmen San Diego and fucking yes. Guts and um, uh, yeah, I remember, I remember those. Guts. They had a lot Legends. of really good game shows back in the day. Legends, Legends of the Hidden, Hidden Temple. Temple. Yes. That's oh, that yes. Yes. Why can no yeah, one ever assemble Temple that damn amazing. monkey? Oh, <laughs> right. All Jeez, I'm saying I'm for the Barracudas. Right. All I'm saying about Legends of the Hidden Temple is, if I had the chance right fucking now to do it, I'd be all about it. I'm 20, <laughs> Hell yeah. 25 years old, and I would be on top of that shit right now. I would beat up a six-year-old, to be honest. <laughs> you already do that. The barracuda awesome. guy came out of the wall, and the barracuda guy came out of the wall to grab me, I'd turn on sock him, and I'd run away from him. <laughs> right. Can you, can you imagine, though? Because we're, we're more or less grown-ass men, right? If they popped out real quick and scared us, we'd be lo- we would be likely to stick them straight in the jaw. You know, he would just turn to stone real quick and he'd fuck fall over. Like, oh shit, my bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You scared the fuck out of me. It was a defense mechanism. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> running out of time, though. <laughs> Somebody will come in. And, and, I, and, and I could see us running up the mountain at the end. And, like, when you're going up the mountain, I could I see myself, like, the opponent that I'm going against, I'd push him off the fucking mountain and run up the fucking thing. Oh, I <laughs> knock guts. his ass up. On guts, yeah. Yo, yeah, um, I'd swing around, kick him off the... I'd, I'd swing around, I'd kick him right off the mountain, and I'd start climbing up. What was the name of that one game show? Um, it had the one fucking sexy bitch, and, like, I the three Summer people Sanders. had to figure out... With, um, yeah, Summer Sanders. Uh, I can't remember what it was called, though. Well, they well, had the name of, like, the kids... Uh, um, kids yeah. Uh, the, or whatever, and they had to give pins or whatever. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, crap! I don't remember the name of it either. There was, uh, and I, they had, and they had, they had the secret word, and if someone said it, it would fucking splatter the contestants. Yeah, they'd slime them. Uh, would figure it out. Yeah, yes. figure it out. That's, it. that's right. Yeah. And there was also that, like, uh, double dare or whatever daily double. Yeah, double dare. dare. Double dare. With, with double double dare. Yeah, that was good. Kids. Mark's yeah, that was good. Kids was great too. Let's salute your I actually, um, I went to Universal when that show was being filmed at Universal, and I sat in the audience and shit, and they were giving out free slime to eat. Lucky, damn! Because um, when I went to Universal, so that was cool. That was, when I went to Universal, it was after they had closed down Nickelodeon Studios, so like I didn't get to like go on a tour of the studio and get slimed at the end or any of that bullshit. I have a videotape of my mom videotaping us, and um, we went to that show. We went to, um, uh, uh, what's the one with the mouses where they travel? Um, uh, you know, oh, about, I think um, I know what you're talking about. This is a great mouse. Bible? Bible. Bible. That's it. Oh, Bible. Oh, Bible. Yeah, oh. yeah. American Tale. They had, Bible. Uh, they had, yeah, they had the show, like, when they, Universal used to do shows, like, actual live shows. Oh, they still I do. When I went, they still had, like, a lot of really good live shows, but, I mean... Like, yeah, stuff like that they obviously don't do anymore because, I mean, like, that movie's so old now that, I mean, they kind of, like, moved on from that. 
danger. Mouse. Yeah, I had the I had the pleasure of doing all that. I, I when I grew up as a, I think when we grew up as kids back in the nineties, I think it was things were a lot better. I think. If you want to hear that segment in its entirety, go back to episode eleven and check out favorite childhood cartoon. Let's talk about the next one. The next one was a bit more serious. It was from episode 18, and it was basically, how fucked are we considering the current state of the country? Um, It's kind of weird because I have a love-hate relationship with politics because on the one hand, I know that politics are very important. Um, You can't escape them when when you're an adult, and uh, you need to be in the political arena and everything at the same time though i despise politics because of how it just turns people into such like like blithering morons and like complete dick bags so uh like i said i'm kind of torn on politics but i thought it would be good um given the current state of affairs uh to talk about the current state of affairs on uh (laughs) America. <laughs> Due to the current state of affairs, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the current state of affairs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I felt like it would make a good topic, and Michael agreed, and we decided to go ahead with it. And it w- it just basically allowed us to vent our frustrations with how overwhelmingly, like, uh, just horrible it seems that the country has gotten around us. And the one thing about this this topic uh, I had uh, some uh, some issue with was Ryan went a little bit overboard, and, uh, yeah, so I had to rein Ryan back a lot. He was enjoyable to work with on topics that weren't related to politics, but as soon as we got into politics and that, he kind of went off the rails and, like, went just, like, total, like... Nut extremist case. yeah, he, yeah. He, he's very extreme with his beliefs so when we uh when we got into topics like that ryan would go a little bit hardcore with a little a uh, little too much a little too a little too much a little too far there was a lot to talk about like that especially in my situation since you know i am military a lot of it was affecting me so yeah at the point in time in which we recorded this yeah i uh, recorded yeah. that topic yeah it was good for us to talk about the current state of affairs. So go listen to us talk about the current state of affairs from episode 18. How fucked are we due to the current state of the government? How fucked do you think we are due to the current state of the government? Super. <laughs> One word answer. We're super fucked. They're basically, they're basically taking a dick and shoving it up our assholes with no lube. Well, I mean, are we talking about the Navy or are we talking about the government in general? All of it. Uh, well, our our military guys are losing all their benefits now. Um, Dale, does the Navy at least spit on it? Uh, lately, no. Lately, no. Okay. Go on, Ryan. Trying to take away uh, people getting money now from uh, that either retired from the military. Uh, they're trying to cut their pay in half. Uh, try to take it away you mean they did take it away well they did which... well yeah did they actually did that officially go through i seen yeah, I it seen, went through i seen yeah. what they were doing was they were doing with the budgeting or whatever and they were budgeting more money towards people that are too dirtbaggish to get a job and i know from personal experience that it's hard as fuck to get a job right now like i uh got an interview for a job uh there was five positions open and I didn't get a single one of the five positions that were open. And I'm like, how many people could have applied for this job to where I didn't get a single position? Or was I just that fucking terrible at the interview? Aside from that, you got the people that actually live off of the government and just keep pumping out fucking kids to get government aid. And they should have to be drug tested to get that government aid. But that's a completely different point. I heard that they were budgeting between that and... Um, the uh, veterans and such that they were allotting more money towards uh, welfare versus paying the veterans their retirement. Is that, did that go through? Yep. Yep. It was a perfect example of that, that I actually seen. And it was a video shown on Facebook. I don't know if you've seen it, but it was a lady who had 15 kids. Jesus Christ. Her quote unquote fiance who fathered, Ten of those kids is uh, go figure. He's a jail. So 
people were actually like donating and giving them money and stuff like that. And during the interview, she was she said that somebody has to pay for her fifteen kids. Yeah, that somebody's fucking her, her and her baby. Nobody, dad, nobody said, nobody told her to go out and have fifteen kids. Fuck's sake! You know? What a condom! God damn, they're not that fucking complicated to use in the goddamn health department. We'll it's give you like, them for free. It's more like go get a hysterectomy for fuck's sake. That's it. We need to start doing like when people have that many kids and they're living off the government. The the government instead of paying for their fifteen kids should say, "Okay, you've hit the five kid limit and you haven't had a job in twenty years, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, give you the option to have a hysterectomy and we'll cover it. We'll cover it because a one time charge for a hysterectomy is a hell of a lot less than paying for another twenty five years with her just adding a kid on every year." But another thing that fucked this country and fucked us up a lot is our government government doing uh, free trading and shipped out a lot of our jobs from America to other countries because and and allow and allowing corporations to send jobs out to other countries because it's cheaper for the corporation. Yeah, we've actually talked about the topic of uh, America outsourcing the jobs on on a previous episode of the <clears> show <throat> if you wanted to go and check it out. Uh, I will link it in the description if I remember to do so. Do I think it. one of the personally, what I think one of the biggest points of the government of us being completely fucked is the fact that I mean, because uh, don't get me wrong, I've hated pretty much every president we've had in office throughout my entire lifetime. But I do have to say, Obama's probably the absolute worst, and two mm. of the main reasons is because for one thing, he's pretty much signed off deals allowing drones to basically kill whoever he wants to be killed. Like, if he doesn't <laughs> like you, he could just basically sign off having you murdered. And another reason is because he's, like, employed more invasions of privacy in that under his administration. I mean, the whole NSA scandal and that, that was all shit that happened, like, during his administration. I mean, it was started under Bush's administration, but it was, like, doubled under his administration. Did you know in Colorado they actually have licenses to shoot down drones? Yeah, like, I did hear about I think, that. That's I think awesome. it's called. I think it's Colorado. It's one of them states out there. actually have to where you can get licenses to shoot down drones. They're expensive as fuck, but you can get them. I'm like, fuck, you... I'm moving to Colorado. Can you have it, you know, like taxidermied and put on your wall? <laughs> is, it too, is it too big? You have to put it on your fucking roof, you know? You know what? I'm pretty sure that's not the first time that question has been answered. <laughs> or asked, at least. Dude, imagine, like, you're a taxidermist in Colorado, and somebody just fucking hands you a drone. <laughs> I would do my... I would try to open it up as much as I can, take out all the, like, inner parts, and, like, put it back together. Because that's what they do with taxidermy. All it is is just a skin. Yeah, they're yeah like, really. They're like, now, what do you got for us there? And like, oh, I got the big ass truck out here. You come take a look in the back. And then they, they walk out there and then they pull a tarp off and they're like, well, goddamn, is that one of them there unmanned aircrafts? Yes, sir, it. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, Jimbo, how the hell did you get that thing? I done shot it with my 12 gauge. <laughs> it's odd. I don't know if people would talk, talk like Oh, they don't in Colorado. No, yeah, they don't. They don't talk like that in Colorado. No, this that's more of like if they did it in like Georgia or something like that. <laughs> they're sitting talking about Colorado next to you know they're like, well, goddamn, Jim Bob. Well, it's just like, what the fuck? We're in Louisiana all of a sudden. <laughs> my my thought on it was like, who has shit taxidermied? White trash. My family. <laughs> oh, well, my... <laughs> that's I mean... redundant. My, I mean, my day, my day just not got all better. white trash has things taxidermy, my friend. There's a lot of successful country boys that have things taxidermy on their walls. It, it was funny because, like, it was so perfect where I said white trash and he said, like, almost at the same exact fucking time. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I understand people, people that hunt have their their kills you know mounted on their wall you know that's that's a whole different thing that's like a you know a trophy thing but people are like god damn it i want that squirrel holding up you know a miniature i'm gonna set of squirrels holding up the uh the american flag like that that iwo jima shit i, I want that there and made out of squirrels you know that that's fucked up like but you 
I, who who the fuck wants to do that though? White trash. Yeah, but no, like going back to what Greg said, like you know, he's I'm adding to what Greg said as what I should say. Did you see where he signed an anti-speech bill? If you want to hear that segment in its entirety, go check out episode 18. How fucked are we due to the current state of the government? Now uh, it's time for the uh, the third and final one of the segments I picked. Um, once again, I decided to go with another more serious topic, and uh, it was another uh, political one. Um, it was uh, freedom in America, or more specifically, are we still free? Um, does it still exist? Yeah, does it? I remember we talked about it, and I mean, we ba- and we all basically agreed that. Yeah, we are more free. Don't give them a spoiler. Most... Don't tell them what oh, okay. we agreed on. We all disagreed and hated each other and fist fought. Pretty okay, much. yeah. <laughs> we hate we hate each other. We never get along with each other. We're just doing this because, you know, we you know, we just uh this is how we get our shits and giggles. We're all I thought, masochists. <laughs> I thought uh, I thought you were gonna say uh for the money. Uh, so I was, I was gonna say for the money for a second, but I thought to myself you know, if I say for the money, Michael would just laugh and then uh, tell me to go fuck myself. So I think mm-hmm. I'll just uh, play the um, and you, play uh, the safe card. Had you uh, said, you know, that uh, we all do it for the money, I would have said, you know, what money? And then when I said, mm. you know, they could always donate um, so that oh, that's the true. show doesn't have to be paid completely out of my pocket to... Uh, make everything happen because you know god forbid anybody else chips any sort of money so I'd say or bust out my credit card or dale you could totally bust out your credit card and pay for everything or a, a portion of it but you know or the listeners that uh, enjoy listening to it could uh, donate as small as one dollar via paypal preferably two dollars because paypal takes a cut it was again one of those topics that needed to be expressed and um, it was also kind of relation to the whole, you know, politics bullshit and the current state of affairs. One thing I, I liked about this is, honestly, little Joe Schmo Plumber down the street guy, uh, Joe Plumber, whatever the fuck that dude's name was, whatever. Greg, the chances of Greg really getting what he wants heard, heard by the government is so small. Anything I want to say, so small. Dale, everyone else, so small. The chances of the government actually hearing what you want to be heard, so small. So we discuss mm-hmm. it on here, in this segment, so that the NSA will hear it, so that we will get through to them. So if you want to hear what we have to say about does freedom still exist in America, from episode 30, check it out. Does your freedom still exist? <laughs> like I said, barely. Freedom does exist, but barely, and... So many goddamn states and cities are enacting harsher and harsher uh, gun laws on um, uh, law-abiding citizens, and none of which have ever worked. I mean, nobody, no gun laws have ever really truly... The only uh, one, the only type of people that are going to be affected by any sort of gun law is those who actually abode, abide by the law. People that own weapons lawfully and do it the proper way. That's the only people that are affected by gun laws. Those who buy them off the street are going to easily continue to buy them off the street. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah, they're basically not, all you do is you disarm the people who need the guns and have you the, know, right the people who the don't guns. Aren't and people who uh, and like the people who shouldn't have the guns are gonna still buy them anyway. So, I mean, it's not only about guns as well. I mean, you got this Obamacare crap. Yeah, the Obamacare uh, thing. You're taking away your your freedom of choice. Um, and you're pretty much are like you're paying extra for people who don't have it. To quote Devo, we have freedom of choice, but you want freedom from choice. That's basically what we're heading towards. Like, everything is just sort of, like, streamlined into, uh, like, just one thing that uh, everybody has to abide by in order to uh, reap any benefits instead of being, like, given the uh, choice of being able to choose uh, what you want to do. With the Obamacare, I'm not going to sign up for any of that shit. I am pissed off that I have to. I am relatively healthy of a person. I actually have nothing wrong with me except for self-inflicted stuff like the fact that I smoke. I smoke, therefore my lungs and other things are damaged because I smoke. Nothing else is wrong with me. 
I don't feel as though I should have to pay to have insurance when I pretty much do not ever have to use it. There's been very few, very small situations in which I've actually had to go to the hospital and had a bill. It's so rare for me, and I'm relatively healthy, that I don't feel like I should have to pay monthly to have goddamn insurance that I would rarely ever use. Basically, by me paying for my insurance, I'm paying other people's bills. They can suck a dick. I don't <laughs> care about that. Now, if I had a wife and kids, I would have insurance because I would want my kids to have insurance. But right now, 26 years old, relatively healthy, barely ever have to go to the hospital for any reason. I should not have to pay for any sort of health care. That is, should be my choice. I should be able to choose not to pay for any sort of health care because I rarely ever need it. Would it be nice to have it in case some catastrophic shit happen? Yes. But the chances of that are so small. Why should I have to pay for something that I rarely ever and possibly never will have to use? I agree. I haven't signed up for it either. And I'm not going to until someone tells me I have to or I have to pay a fine, which is what's coming down the line. As I, I say, you know it's, uh, it, it's getting there. Yeah. It, at a certain point, I don't remember the date, but there's a cutoff date where if you don't have your insurance, your Obamacare insurance, they're going to fine you $250 a year. It's great for uh, it's great for immigrants. Immigrants. Wait, two hundred and fifty dollars a year or two hundred and fifty thousand? I don't. Two hundred and fifty dollars a year. Oh, that's 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 the number that I heard. I don't know for a hundred percent fact if that's true. Only a year. The number that I heard. Yeah. Well, then fuck that. I'm not. It's cheaper to not have insurance and pay the fees. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. Che- it's cheaper to pay the fine. And and I, I tell you, I tell you what, to be to be completely honest. Unless uh, the school sends me anything that I have to file for taxes for last year, guess what? I don't have to file taxes. How are they going to find me to find me? You haven't had any steady employment, so... Exactly. I can't get (laughs) fucking employment because of the state of the goddamn uh, the economy. So I can't even get employment, even if I wanted to have insurance through employment. So they're like, no, you're going to have this insurance or pay this fine. Well, I don't have money as it is. You know, but how are they going to find me to to issue that fine? You don't have to pay income tax, actually, unless you made a certain amount of money in the year. Yeah, well, I I got uh, a W-2 or W-9 or whatever for like 60, like 58 bucks or some shit like that. Yeah, you're good. You don't have to file. (laughs) I'm like, let the government come after me for that. Yeah, they won't. It it, it would be a waste of their time, and I didn't make enough. Well, I think freedom still exists in America. I mean, more than some other countries, but we are slowly seeing our freedoms being stripped away little by little in the name of national security. And the problem with that is, you know, 98% of us are good, loyal, patriotic, well-meaning people that don't want to harm anybody. And the whole reason for all these measures for national security is to catch the 2% of people that might want to cause harm. And I don't think that's fair to any of us. I agree. I, you know, we have, we do, we do still have freedom because you got to look at countries that don't. And then, you know, if you want to complain, like we don't have freedom. uh, Well, you know, look at, you know, countries like Russia. I mean, Putin had this ban uh, pussy riot or whatever locked up forever because, you know, they spoke out one time, I believe, against Putin or something that Putin did. Yeah, they had a song with some lyrics in it that were anti-Putin or anti-government altogether. Yeah, and uh, they spent a good amount of time basically locked in a box. I don't know how the people of Russia, the the people, I mean, I'm sure every country has people like America where we're totally well-meaning, totally patriotic, we just want to get along with everyone, we don't want any conflict whatsoever. And that's it for another episode of 30 Minutes of Mayhem. I have been your host. My name is Michael Mayhew, and I have been here with my co-hosts. Greg. And Dale. It's out on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. Android users use Stitcher and Spreaker. That's the best I, I can tell you. Or you could check us out on iTunes. Donate to us on PayPal. We already told you why you should uh, why you should do that. I hope you have enjoyed Greg's favorite segments from episode 1 through 36. And... That's it. Later, fellas.